Christopher and this setup he's got out there. So, but this is our second town hall meeting under the simplified accountability structure. And as part of that, uh, part of our commitment to, to you, the congregation, is that we would have these sessions, lis listening sessions, uh, periodically, hopefully quarterly. watching it at home. second town hall meeting under the simplified accountability structure uh, and we have under that structure we have 10 people on the leadership team so there's not a thousand meetings every week that you have to go to or that people have to go to uh, I'm gonna ask if the leadership team members who are here to just raise your hand you'll be hearing from most of them sometime later today but there should be 10 of us present I don't know how many hands are up but anyway so there are 10 members on the leadership team uh, a couple of things I want to uh, mention. We, the leadership team meets every third Tuesday of the week, of the month. <laughs> <laughs> They've had a bunch of emails this week, folks, so yes, I feel that one. Every third Tuesday of the month. And uh, it's an open meeting, uh, much like the, under the old structure, the, uh, the church council was open. The only thing that's not open is if, as the leadership team, we have to discuss personnel matters, uh, that portion will be closed, but you're certainly welcome to come. It's uh, the third Tuesday, I think it's seven o'clock. That's our starting time. We try to get out of there by nine, but we're not, not too good about that yet. But we're getting more efficient. So anyway, so the point today is to, to share with you what we've done since the last town hall meeting, how we uh, inputted and acted upon hopefully most of your suggestions that we came up with. Lauren is going to take notes, so if you come up with great suggestions on this one, we will uh, take notes so that we can uh, use them when we, the leadership team is going to have an off-site meeting on 16th. August, what's 16th, 17th of August. So we're going to use those notes uh, to, to figure out where we go from here or where the church goes from here. So the only other thing, uh, this is a two-way listening process. We want to listen to you. We want you to listen to us. We want to t tell you what we're doing, but we want to hear from you as to what it is you would like to see us do. And probably the most important thing I tell you is there's a lot of good stuff in the back. <laughs> Coffee, pastries. Uh, Bob and Amy made sure we had that. Uh, so uh, I think that's all I've got for now. You going to sing for I am not going to sing for you. <laughs> I'm going to turn off the mic and no, no, no. I'll just step away from it. All right, that works. All right, this song should be familiar. It's at the top of your page. We've been singing it in worship now for a while. Uh, but we are uh, going to be hearing from the leadership board. But one of the key elements of this is recognizing that old phrase from Vacation Bible School of I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. And as a church, that is celebrating and sharing communion each week we embody the sense of coming to the table not just in a sense of forgiveness and 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 the idea of from the week past but also being fed that is so much of what jesus was doing was feeding those disciples for the hours even not just the week to come but the hours that were before them 
And so this idea of being one around the table and being made one to be the body of Christ, as Paul would later articulate, this song, then let it be ours and let it be our intention this time together. So let me find a <clears throat> pitch. Anybody that likes to sing, help me out. Make us one, Lord, make us one. Holy Spirit, make us one. Let your love flow so the world will know we are one in you. Make us one, Lord, make us one. Holy Spirit, make us one. Let your love flow so the world will know we are one in you. Thank you, Dave. I'm still far enough away from the mic to hear me. Uh, the first stop is Linda. Uh, Linda Rose is going to talk to us about communications with the congregation. Thank you. When it's dark, I have to wear my glasses so I can see. We got a number of suggestions from you at our March Town Hall about communications, uh, both internal and external. Uh, you said that you really like the news you can use, you really like the announcements in the worship bulletin. So we haven't done anything to hurt those. You still should be getting them and seeing them. Um, but we have added outside of the pastor's office, uh, there's a table, there's a sign with all of the pictures of the members of the leadership board. Uh, so you'll know who we are and can recognize us and grab us if you need to ask a question or tell us something. We also have a supply on the table copy of the minutes of our meetings and a list of the goals that we're working on. So any of you obviously are free to get those uh, to see what we're doing. As Dave mentioned, you're invited to our meetings, but if you can't get to the meeting, those minutes are there for your review. We um, have been one of the things that you suggested about internal communications was to use additional methods, um, such as somebody mentioned Sign Up Genius, and Bob Tompkins is gonna talk a little bit more about his experience with that, but he used it to get people to sign up for Strawberry Fair. So we are trying to reach out with other options, and as I said, he'll let you know more about that. One of the things that you suggested was uh, an electronic sign, an LED sign out on the lawn. We explored those options, we found out costs, and then we had a follow-up communications meeting, uh, a next steps meeting after worship in May. And the overwhelming consensus from the people who were there was that it was not <coughs> worth the money. So we have moved on from that idea and instead our focusing on improving the ways that we can produce and display banners on the lawn, always using the Reconciling logo because that came up in the town hall. Um, so we're still working on that. We've found a lot of options, some of which turned out to, these work great except when it rains kind of thing. So, so we're still trying to find uh, the best method to install banners so that they look professional and sturdy and straight all the time. Um, another thing that came up was to increase the directional signage um, in the, the town of Ashland and in the county. Um, Cameron volunteered, is she here too? Cameron took the lead um, on that, for which we are very grateful. She has been talking to the Ashland City Council members and has gotten approval for us to replace the old sign by the Ashland Post Office and to put it in a location where it won't be blocked by the tree so that somebody might be able to see it. So we're working on that. 
we're also exploring the concept of putting a second directional sign on the Randolph-Macon property at the corner of England and Henry. Um, so we're still working on that. Um, I know Michael pointed out that, well, part of our, you may want to speak to this, but part of our lease. <coughs> Bill might talk on that when he gets to incorporation. But yes, okay. our identity is as the college chapel. So. so we might want to put that on the signage as well. Um, so anyway, that's in process. We're working on that, but we have made some progress on at least getting permission. We still want to talk to the Hanover County officials about putting signage outside of the city limits. Um, again, to point to our church. Um, okay, one thing, uh, Randy Gordon, who's not able to be here today, but he and I have sort of been um, taking the lead on communications. We would both really, really like some people to volunteer to make a communications ministry team. Um, we've mentioned this before and so far nobody has jumped up to volunteer, but there are a lot of things we'd like to start doing, things that you came up with at the, at the last town hall meeting, um, postcards and flyers to the community, um, putting articles in local news outlets, using patch. Uh, so if you are at all interested in communications, uh, internal or external, please see me or, or Randy Gordon. We really would like to have a team put together. Uh, as part of that, we know we need a lot of ministry teams and we are going to be soliciting laity involvement um, on a, on a wide range of <coughs> topics. Uh, Randy and I are working on a format to conduct a survey of members for your interest levels, your skills, your talents, uh, what ministry areas are you interested in. Um, I think um, we should, this is just my personal, we haven't talked about this at the leadership board, but I would like to see us, um, when we do our stewardship <coughs> campaign, we make pledges for our gifts, but we vow to support this church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. So I think we should uh, think about how we do that in all those categories. And service uh, is one area where we really want your help. We're also looking for an umbrella title um, a logo, a slogan for the mission projects that we do. Uh, we've been working with Kendra um, about how can we tie, better tie together the work that we do and the mission projects that Randolph-Macon students do and especially highlight those that we do together. Um, so we're working on a theme, serving together and trying to come up with some a logo, maybe some signage, some flyers, some letterhead, to really encourage the involvement of Randolph-Macon students in, and faculty and staff in uh, many of the things that we, we do. Um, I did mention um, the communications ministry team. I also would like to lift up one other ministry team uh, that I am a part of. It's the Celtic Worship Ministry Team. I'm the only lay person on that team. We have a lot of talented clergy, but I think we need more laity there. And uh, Rob Vaughn has volunteered to lead a reading study about Celtic worship, uh, that go deeper into the meaning of it, the significance of some of the things that we do. Um, Rob is here, I don't know if he wants to say more about it, but I know he, he was talking about having a Zoom study. If you're interested, uh, see Rob, talk to me. Uh, he will announce the times and the dates for that. Uh, we're hoping though that uh, if people are interested and get involved, uh, then they might wanna join the ministry team and help us with uh, the liturgies and the planning of those worship <coughs> services. Any questions or? 
Let me direct this. We'll hold for questions. Let's go ahead and go to Bob. As okay. Well, and we'll, we'll okay. stop at the end of the second. Sounds good. That sounds great. Thanks, Linda. So I'm going to touch a little bit on a couple of these other points up here, connecting with the community, a little bit more with the Rent Making Campus. So um, <clears throat> many of you know my wife, Amy. She was the point person for the Strawberry Fair, which was a successful event we had here on June 1st. I played hooky. I was at my college reunion number 30. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we have a lot of events which happen here in Ashland. And some of those events happen right at our front door. Um, Strawberry Fair is, I think, probably the most prominent event. There are others. There are some others coming up this fall that Ashland does every year. There's the Holiday Parade, which happens around Thanksgiving time. And that's a parade which happens right here down Henry Street. And then there's uh, Randolph Macon Back to School. <clears throat> so we're on a college campus. People come back to school in the fall. And so we try to do something every year to you know, start to build those engagements with the college community. So it's students, faculty, anybody connected with the college. So you know, if there's something we can do as a congregation to help build those connections, we need to figure out strategically how we can do that. And what kind of bandwidth we have, what kind of volunteers we have that can really help us build those things. So that's a lot of brain, we do a lot of brainstorming as a leadership team in that way. And um, Linda mentioned that we've met with Kendra. Kendra Grimes is the campus chaplain and she's got lots of great ideas that we can um, try to um, talk a little, little bit more about as, as we get closer to the start, start of the school year. I wanna circle back to the strawberry. <coughs> This year was probably, I guess it was the most well-attended event ever in the history of Strawberry Fair. 40,000 people were here in town. We have, here, here at Duncan, we have, we've done different iterations of involvement in the past, and I won't go into those details, but since the pandemic, we've really um, focused on simpler tasks where we can be a comfort station for folks who get tired or overwhelmed, or hot, or thirsty. So we provide them with water. So we have a station out here with a tent where you can get some shade, water for people, water for dogs, and um, you know, they've got their own separate, separate water station. <laughs> they've got a cooling station for the pets where they can, the pets can swim around and <coughs> get cooled down. Um, <clears throat> but we need folks, you know, to help you know, keep those water coolers, coolers full. We went through over a thousand cups of those recyclable cups, or cyclable <laughs> cups. <laughs> we estimate over 2,000 people actually came into our building to use our bathrooms. Over in the nursery area, we have a small, I don't know how, how many of you have seen this, but between the nursery and the, um, I guess the, the younger kids' room, um, there is a there is a small toilet that toddlers can use. Very popular. <laughs> so okay, so that was successful. Sign up genius was a good way to get people involved with that. You know, in uh, we're used to using the colony for sign up sheets. You know, all of us here in this room today know about this because we're here in this building. But there are people connected with our congregation who may want to get involved and volunteer for events, but may not be here every Sunday or remember to sign their names on the sign-up sheet, or maybe consider putting their names on the sign-up sheet, but like now, you know, somebody else will do it. But if you've got a link for something like Sign-up Genius, most people use, you know, email, or they read the news you can use. It's easy to put your name down, choose a time slot. If you need to make a change, message the coordinator, hey, I can't do it this time, but can, I, can we switch? That's a really flexible way. If, if any of you find yourselves leading a mission team or running an event, consider using that. I think that could be a good way to help increase involvement in your event. <clears throat> Going to move on before we move on to my last thought. Just want to circle back to this fall. So, um, welcome back event, Trunk or Tree Holiday Parade. Next Sunday, what is the theme for next Sunday, Michael? Uh, for the after church, after church, it's going to be looking at these next couple of weeks and months right here in the fall, start of the fall for these kinds of events and ways. Yeah, we're going to 
Thank you, Michael. So we're just going to talk more about this and think about ways you might like to get involved in some of the things we are known for as a church. If there's something happening in our front door, we should be involved in it. Um, so thinking back to March, our last town hall meeting, one of the suggestions was we re-implement a choral scholars program, which we've had here in the past. We're going to do it. It's in December works. We're going to start that this fall. And, um, <clears throat> and yeah, that's really my message. So, um, you know, ways that we can get the, the college students in the building and involved in our events are also things that we think about. So. <coughs> Thank you, Bob. Uh, I'm, I'm Bill Kitchens. For those don't know, I'm uh, the chair for the leadership team. Um, as we go through incorporation, uh, there'll probably be title changes to all of us, <laughs> so watch for that. So I want to talk to you just briefly about the change to this um, accountability model, okay, and how we're all part of it, okay. When you look at this change to um, SAS, as we refer to it, the key focus of the leadership team is governance. So our responsibility is to deal with the policies, um, the direction of, of the church, you know, approve finances, and, and try to provide a unified voice for communication, okay? So the leadership team is governance. The pastor is effectively our chief operating officer. He's managing the church, all right? He's, he's managing the business of the church. And the staff, the staff is there to equip both the leadership team and you, the congregation, in fulfilling our missions, okay, our mission of the church. So the next thing there is the congregation, okay? It's important that we all understand that a big part of the accountability of this simplified accountability model is that the, the congregation is also accountable for, for what we're doing. And, and they are, in fact, and you are, in fact, the, the key to that success that we're going to have. We, we really need folks to remain engaged, recognize that you are accountable, and, and look at things that we're doing. For example, Kendra, who's not part of the leadership team, identified an opportunity for us to use funds available from the, the broader denomination as a grant to extend our reach into the, uh, into the community. Um, things like the Celtic service, the opportunity to serve in the communications area, those are all critical things for us to do. And, I, and we're going to also be really relying on you as we extend um, and respond to the direction that you give us, or the request that you give us. So that leads into the next part, you know, on the agenda, which is the music staffing. You know, we heard uh, from from you uh, that that music is something that's important to you. It's important for us as a church to help us grow, and we are doing things such as uh, going ahead and implementing that Coral Scholars. Program, which we expect to actually have populated um, the, with the <coughs> students this fall. Okay, that's our objective. Right. We also are working at staffing our overall music um, music program. Okay. We have dedicated and, and approved funds within our budget to support music director accompaniment uh, uh, in, in organ and the, um, the handbell choir functions, okay? Us committing the funds to that is just part of it, okay? We rely on all of you to participate. So um, that's what's gonna make this successful, right? So as far as the staffing goes, we have uh, developed the job descriptions and we're finalizing the, um, the, the pay ranges that, uh, that we're able to fit within our budget, okay? And we're prepared to publish those um, 
effectively you know, tar targeting the first of this month so that we can get some resources in for this fall. All right. So great, we'll move forward. We will bring in those resources, but to bring in those resources, for those resources to be effective, we need you to step in. So, so I, you know, as a challenge, if you like to sing, if you, if you would like to hear more music, we need everybody to step in, okay? And that includes both um, adults and, um, with hair the color of mine, or lack of hair, um, <laughs> as well as all the way to, to kids and youth. Because there's, there's an opportunity for us to build the energy and to really extend our, um, extend our mission and engage the community through music. I know that when, um, when we, my family and I started coming here, the music program was really important to my daughter. And that was what kept her engaged. And that, you know, was carried on through college and, and you know, and, and now it's still important to her in her life. So, All right, so again, we're moving forward. Um, we've uh, approved the job descriptions, we're ready to post, but to be successful, we need you to step up. Thank you. Okay, folks. <laughs> I've got a very lengthy technical legal discussion. So <laughs> sit back. Um, some of the genesis of this is my law partner uh, uh, incorporated Ramsey Memorial United Methodist down in Chesterfield. And so he talked to me about it and suggested, you know, why we haven't done that. And I said, well, <laughs> let's, let's talk about it. So uh, I've been in contact with uh, legal counsel for uh, the conference and stuff, uh, run a uh, bylaws and articles of incorporation and so forth. So what would this do and how would things change for us if we're incorporated? Well, as it is right now, we're an unincorporated, unincorporated association. So we have trustees that manage the property. Uh, you have our counsel. Uh, our leadership team and so forth and uh, we basically govern the church that would change under a corporation we would have be just like a normal corporation not a stock corporation but an unincorporated uh, 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 unincorporated charitable corporation and so we would have a board of directors so your council now or your leadership team would become the board of directors and we'd have, instead of uh, Bill being the chairman of the leadership team, he'd be the president. Then we'd have a vice president, secretary, and treasurer, like any other organization. We presently file annually with the circuit court as to who our trustees are. And that every time we have something that requires the trustees to do, we have to make sure that's updated and has to get approved by the circuit court judge. We would not have to do that anymore. The other and one of the more major effects is that with incorporation, well, we need to ask you this. Do, how many of you know that you are personally, as one of the benefits of being a member of Duncan Memorial is that you are personally liable for the debt of this church? <laughs> I've got what, two or three hands? Surprise, surprise. <laughs> So, most of you didn't realize when you became a member of the church, you have personal liability for the value of our debt. Uh, now, that's not going to affect us until uh, we decide to close the doors and go bankrupt, but that's technically and legally what we are. Incorporating will remove that obligation from you, and then the only people liable for anything are going to be your directors. 
<laughs> you just killed my nomination process. <laughs> well, we're going to fly building insurance for that. So, you know, we, the directors are going to be insured, okay? Um, but we don't have insurance for you personally as a member of the church. So, in any event, uh, we're going to require a uh, charge conference to approve this. Uh, I've already got the paperwork drafted. I've been talking to the council with the, with, um, to, to get it approved and so forth and, and tweak it a little bit because we have kind of an unusual situation. You know, when most churches disassociate or whatever, they have property, real estate, that they have to transfer to the conference. We're not in that situation because we actually don't own the building and the, and the ground we're on right now. We lease it for 99 years for $1, but we have a favorable lease with the college. But in any event, uh, we no longer own any parts of the building or the land because it was part of uh, having to accomplish the financing uh, of our debt back in 2015. So uh, in a nutshell, that's the effect of what being a corporation is gonna be for, for the church. It isn't going to change the way we operate other than we don't have to go to the circuit court to have any decision made that uh, <coughs> affects anything and we don't have any personal liability for anything as just members of the church. Anybody have a question? Yeah, we got back to the Yeah, and this is the time to open it up for any questions you have on any of the presentations so far or any suggestions you have. <clears throat> that you would like the leadership team to be working on. Debbie? Sure. I'm not a Boosie Corporation. I'm just curious what is the fee and is for doing it initially and annually? What, what is the, the, what fee are the fees? Oh, well, the city corporation fees are going to be under $75. Per year? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And for timing wise, as Bill mentioned, all of this will come before the congregation again in the in a charge conference. This has to be approved by a charge conference. So you'll hear more, much more about incorporation than you ever yeah, wanted to hear. But I'll answer any questions now. Yeah. Go ahead. Can't uh, churches incorporate as limited liability entities? Like, LLCs? No. Well, short and sweet. They just can't. I mean, they, LLCs are, are, are limited liability companies. Yeah. Okay, has members, doesn't have doesn't have directors and so forth. So, and it, it, there's no there's no tax ramifications between you know technically between LLCs and corporations. If, you know, subchapter S and an LLC are basically the same thing. It's just a question of how you depreciate your assets tax wise. So, you know, taxes. Well, being a corporation aren't going to affect us at all. We're still we're still a charitable organization. Yes. When it's a corporation, you said that the leaders now would become directors. Correct? Yes. What is the minister's role? He's going to be the minister. <laughs> Does he have a role in the corporation? No. Oh, okay. He doesn't. He's he's, a, he's he's our employee now. <laughs> Not to get too far in the weeds, no. I classify as a self-employed contractor because you provide the funds of my arrangement, but you do not hire me. I'm appointed by the cabinet of the bishop to wherever I serve, but they don't pay my paycheck, so they're not my employer. IRS. <laughs> Any, any other questions about what he's one of those involved? employees that I'll somebody us. else tells us whether we can employ him or not? <laughs> That's the DS. We can talk about that later. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Because now we're going to move in. Lin Linda Rose is going to talk. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Debbie, Debbie Childs is going to talk <laughs> a little bit about the uh, upcoming, <laughs> upcoming off site uh, leadership retreat. And. Uh, Get out of my way, I got the toys. She got the toys. <laughs> I got toys. Something to do with kayaking, I guess. I don't know. Good morning. Good I think morning. I know everybody in this room, but if you don't know me, I am Debbie Chow. Um, I have to tell you, 
this was strange water stepping into this new structure. I have served in previous churches on the church council, so this was a whole new thing for me. And I hope that I came at it with a positive attitude, and I have to say it's been a wonderful experience. It's really an exciting time to be on the leadership board. We have a lot of energy, we have a lot of enthusiasm, and then we have a passion for making disciples, new disciples, for Jesus Christ, for the transformation of the world. And that's what we're here, all here about. So along with that, the weekend of Friday, August the 16th, and all day on Saturday, August the 17th, the entire board, the 10 people you've seen here today, plus we hope some of the new oncoming board members, of which there will be four, four of us will be moving off, four new board members will be coming on. We're gonna dedicate that weekend to the task of planning our focus and our direction for the next 18 months. We have seriously taken on this task and we need your input, and we need your prayers. The board itself, these 10 members, have self-funded a retreat at Richmond Hills. We've hired a facilitator and a co-facilitator to guide us through this process so that we can all be involved in the discussions about what we're going to do. Pamela Anderson, I don't know if any of you have met her, she's now, I guess, a part-time employee on our district staff, but she has been our SAS coach, and as a leadership board, we have met with her a couple of times this past year, and she's been very helpful. So she's gonna be our facilitator, and she's gonna bring a co-facilitator along with us. Our desire is that the re retreat will bear fruit in the solidification of our goals and identifying the key components that need to be in place for their achievement. We want to ensure that you, as a congregation, have input. We want to hear your input. We desperately need your input. We want you to be able to embrace and be willing to work toward the implementation of these goals. Thus, it's really important that we hear from you today and in the days between now and Friday, August the 16th. We want the thought and planning that we have invested to be in tune with what you as a congregation want to see us do and the direction that you want to see us move in. This will ensure that we have a common objective and one that we are willing to hold each other accountable for. And we have really learned in this simplified accountable structure, accountability <coughs> of you making us accountable us helping you be accountable is a key component in success. You've heard some of this already today, but I'm gonna tell you, um, our facilitator, Pam Anderson, asked us to pick three goals that we would like to work toward for over the next 18 months. And so what we did, we went back and looked at previous town hall meetings, we talked about individual discussions we had with you as members of the congregation, and currently, I want you to keep in mind that these are the three goals that we are considering after we receive further input from you and, and working on that retreat weekend. Our first goal is to increase membership and involvement of younger families, and hold on, <laughs> younger families with children with the goal of increasing the membership of 25 new family units over the next eight. Wow. <laughs> if you're going to set a goal, set it out there and really engage people and strive to meet them. Our second goal you've already heard about, and that comes along with the uh, increased involvement with randolph making students, faculty, and staff. We would like to see the increase the involvement of randolph making college students, faculty, and staff in the life of Duncan with the goal of involving 250 to 300 students and faculty in some form of worship, <coughs> Bible study, missions projects, services, or related activities. And we'd have to keep track of this. We've got to know, are we, are we heading in the right direction? Do we need to reset our course? Are we going to try, are we going to make our mark? When we talked about this goal, I was impressed with, I couldn't imagine 
the kind of energy that could fill this building with the involvement of that many Randolph-Macon students, faculty and staff, and various projects. Doesn't mean they'll all be coming to church every Sunday, but they're engaged with us in some type of outreach or some type of ministry. So that's goal number two. And goal number three involves all of us, and that's mobilizing the involvement of Duncan members to engage, to achieve one or more of our goals, one or more of those three goals, that 75% of you will at some time in the next 18 months actually work with us hand in hand in achieving one of these goals. That's a lot to think about. They're lofty goals. It might not say they're easily attainable, but we're not going for the low hanging fruit here. We want to really stretch ourselves and invite our community in so that you can see how special Duncan is and what a wonderful place we can offer people. So, do you have any questions about those three goals at this point or input you would like to share with us as we move forward into retreat planning? Laura's going to capture this so we'll know what you're thinking about. Sure. I just wondered if you know how many students right now, if you're aiming for 200, what is the, do we have a number presently? Michael, we have had some data on that. But I we have, have some data, we don't have a good capture. Just anecdotally, I've mentioned like the uh, packing party that we held here in this room this spring. That was a significant number. For those of you that were here, you saw some at some stage. There were some that came ahead. There were as many that came afterwards as well. So that's just an image. Um, we had over the course of this year, uh, how many of you got to know a student in worship this past year? I wanna just celebrate for you the connectivity this last year, especially out of the freshman class. You carried relationships all year long with some of these students. That would be an anecdotal piece. We don't have data per se, but just using those. We do have applicants for the Coral Scholars. I'll just mention that. I'm sorry, you went Applicant for the Coral Scholars already. Oh, good. Applicant for the Coral Scholars. And we have activities that don't can support, such as circles, which engage the um, so Randolph-Macon students in the, uh, the nursing program. ELL and as well and has had volunteers to help out so as well. Thank we you. have students that are coming here on a weekly basis in the building, you know, supporting our overall mission, even though it may not necessarily be a dedicated Duncan function. And then your other goal of 75%, I know Faith keeps track of who does things other than worship, small group or whatever. What is our participation current? There again, we have some statistics. I don't have those with me right at the time. So but it might I, not be a huge It might not be a huge leap, but I think, I think there's definitely room for growth. There. Yeah, it's insert there. Uh -huh. One of the things I would say is that we currently track participation, as in how many people are sitting in the sanctuary, how many people are sitting in a small group. Participation, as the board has been using that vocabulary, is involvement. Involvement in things like the planning teams, communications team, how many people are, are getting into a team that develops things, the commission team, the worship team, those kinds of things and participation. I think it's a different instead vocabulary. Of, instead of packing lunches. Right. We need folks, we need a larger number of us engaged in the planning, <clears throat> developing, and implementation. Bending the conversation a little bit. Anecdotally, looking at churches that are coming out of the pandemic, uh, re returning or recovering uh, attendance and participation, there seems to be three things that are present. One is outstanding worship, including uh, uh, Holy Communion offered every week. Uh, second uh, for this is the outreach for the community, Music is uh, another way in which uh, speaks to the first one. Where we should be looking and begin thinking is, what are we going to do to recover our Sunday school and Christian education program? And do we need to have a professional consultant come in and, and tell us what has been learned in just the last couple of years? 
for churches to recover their church schools so that we can return to that uh, for Dr. Memorial. Just a comment. I think that that's a valuable comment. And I think that as we start to move forward with trying to engage 25 new families, that has to be one of the strategies. Right now we have a goal, but we've got to put the strategies in place and we have to have the people to help us implement those strategies. So thank you for bringing that forward and maybe we can look if, to if you I for stress, If I can stress, we need someone who knows from the last two years or three years what is working within our culture and demographics and size of congregation. And if we have to invest in that, I think it will pay off in the long run. That's, that's good information. Thank you for sharing that. And we'll certainly be back in touch with you to get further information on how we can do this. Write this name down. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, something that could relate to our somebody on the board that can find out if the programs are offered here, enrichment programs after the school day, mm -hmm. would there be a van from the school that can bring kids here? A lot of schools do that. If there's something near the school that offers something for students, the, the school will send the van over with the kids that have signed up for that. So this Great idea. Out. Thank you. Thanks, Hurts. When I was first hired here, I had an after school children's program. We sent our church band to Elmont, and the ones who came from Bingham Clay and Gandy got off the bus here. Wow. So it was a regular bus stop. Mm -hmm. That's good. Those are wonderful ideas. And this is the, these are the ideas and the enthusiasm that we need, plus Jim's idea of really having a consultant help us. Any other questions? Christian Cares community here where you have a team that would do that is something we can certainly look, look towards putting into place. And I think a lot of this is going to come to fruition as we move forward and Michael starts to have some meetings with specific groups, as I understand it, that will focus on these issues. If you want to focus on the elderly, if you want to focus on building our Sunday school, if you want to focus on working with Randolph-Macon students, there'll be concrete teams that you can come and work with to do that. Anything else? I don't want to hold you up too long. Yeah. I think food and fellowship is really a key part. You feed them, they'll come. <laughs> Again, back table. <laughs> don't leave it on the table today. Thanks, Bob. And Yes, more, it's fun, more broader than this meeting. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah. I think if you can sit down and break their ass with people, <coughs> you can have a cup of anything. coffee with people in the colonnade. Yeah. I mean, great, that great thoughts. That was kind of evident when we had, when the Braving Women had the tea party. Yes. How, <laughs> how much everybody, so if we can include everybody, right. not just us Braving Women, then <laughs> I, and our Braving your braving husbands, <laughs> whatever, support us. Um, that support us, I think that, that would help a whole lot. Uh, the other thing is, me, I grew up in this church, and I remember, this was in the day when you could let your children walk from a school to some place. Um, we would walk from Gandy here on Wednesday afternoons for choir practice, us children. And, the, and it wasn't just Duncan Memorial kids, it was, we had a huge children's choir um, that brought in more families, um, and Reeves probably remembers that time frames too. Of course, we had a dynamic <coughs> children's men, um, choir director, but it was, it, it's something that needs to come back. Yeah, I agree. Just thought of that her mentioning the tea party. That's another outreach you could do with children, since they like dressing up if you had a 
party once every, I don't know, four months. The men had a tea party, so they had to dress up and I love it. I love that to run with it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is an item that has come up in the voice class, and I don't know whether this should stay as a project of the voice class or to the greater church, but we had conversations following some studies about trying to work with this city, I guess, the county, I don't know who, uh, about helping to provide affordable housing through mm -hmm. Henry Clay. I was writing, or Lynn, uh, Martha Stokes was riding with me Wednesday as we were doing lunch train deliveries. We ended up having to go to Henry Clay. And so she went in with me, we were talking about, and I talked to the two people who were the administration secretaries and all. And they were saying, well, when we vacate this place in August, you know, it just all turns over to Clay. I don't know whether that, whether it would be helpful to say we take this as a whole church project, because that's reaching out to a population in our community that has need physically, economically, but also spiritually. Absolutely. Um, and I, you know, I don't know, I mean, it, it would involve, I mean, her home county has five elementary schools that have been converted for housing. How, mm -hmm. you know, how can we connect with other corporations in that way? And is that a, to be a, a goal of the whole community of faith here or stay as a part of a smaller group? Excellent. I'm glad you brought that up because we have discussed that from the voice class. Any other comments or questions? Am I? Debbie mentioned the, being on the leadership board and how it's some of us are kind of struggling to get our hands around it. I find these town halls somewhat frustrating because you will come up with these marvelous ideas, fabulous ideas, and then what, you want us to do it? I'm, I mean, that's not our role. So I want somebody to say, I'm gonna take this on. When we ordain pastors, we say, take thou authority. Well, laity can do that too. <laughs> take thou authority. If you think these are great ideas, and I think they are, do it. Say okay, I'm gonna. We're gonna start. A man. <laughs> <laughs> but Debbie, not me. Debbie, inter <laughs> Debbie, introduce the thought that you have holding that to, to Linda's point. No, go ahead. Tell them why you're holding that. I agree with you 100. percent Nine people can't do it. We can't. There's no way. If we work 40 hours a day. Every week of the year, we could not do it. But with you, we can do this. And we don't need 40 hours from you. We need bits and chunks of your time and your talent. So I want to leave you with this picture. And it was something that Michael kind of hit on one day when he was talking to us. I want you to picture a small boat in a lake. It's a Sunday afternoon. It just floats and it drifts. It's at the mercy of the winds and the currents. It doesn't know where it's going, so it's not going to know when it gets there. It's just a drift. So you go out and you put a man in the boat and you give him an oar. Or a brave woman. Yeah, that's why. Oh, and I had that down here. You place a man or a woman in a boat with only one oar. And I don't know much about being in a boat, but if you do this, you're going to go. You're going to go in a circle. You're going to expend a lot of energy, and you're not going to go anywhere, and you're not going to get anything accomplished. You're not going to know your destination probably, and you're not going to know once again when you get there. Now, what do we got here? Got two more. Lindy, go help her. <laughs> Come on, Linda. <laughs> I've got to have my notes here. Okay, so um, you better get on the correct side. Yes, that's right. <laughs> One on each side. So when now change happens. Okay, we're gonna we're in a rowboat and we're gonna row together. We all well, maybe. <laughs> all right. Now yeah, we're gonna go that way. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and so we're rowing along, and this is great. 
Our goal is back there to get us some goodies, but it's a long way. And, <laughs> and it can be exhausting. You're making progress, but for two people in that boat, it's exhausting. <laughs> However, now I want you to look at the boat again, and it's filled with all of you. You're going to each dip your oar into the water in time with each other. You establish a rhythm. It becomes natural. You establish a rhythm. You have a purpose. You have a forward momentum. <laughs> you do. <laughs> and you will most likely meet and exceed your goal. Now, I couldn't bring an oar for each of you. Kenny said no. <laughs> But if you have read or seen the book, or read the book or seen the movie Boys in the Boat, how many of you have seen that? Oh, isn't it wonderful? Oh, if you haven't read the book, you haven't seen the movie, go home this afternoon, order the book, read the movie, you will be inspired. I want you to use Boys in the Boat as your visual. It's about nine Americans and their epic quest for gold in the 1936 Berlin Olympics very appropriate with what's going on now. They weren't famous athletes. They weren't the LeBron Jameses of the world today and the Stephon Currys and the Simone Biles. They were sons of farmers and loggers. They were poor. They were struggling to get an education. But they were a team that was made to succeed. They had a goal. They worked hard and they held each other accountable. accountable. And yes, much to Adolf Hitler's chagrin, they won the 1936 gold medal in the, Berlin, in the Berlin Olympics. I don't know about you, this is the team I want to run for. How about you? <laughs> we need each of you in any way to claim your oar. You don't have to go deep. Paddle shallow, we need shallow, we need deep. We just need your involvement in achieving these goals. Let's give them a word. I want to close out uh, by saying thank you to our leadership board for the presentation. Thank you to you for your engagement here uh, with them. Um, and ideas that continue to flow. This is a part of that rhythm. Uh, periodically, we will have these town hall conversations, but also I want you to know that these individuals, and if you forget who's on the board, that area just outside of the office has everybody's beautiful pictures. Uh, and so come find us with your ideas. One thing that is really helpful is as ideas come to us, be sure to get into personal conversation with us. Um, because it's a kind of an idea bubble out there, but not knowing where to track it down. Uh, things that are just you know vague or, or uncertain about where that idea came from or where the energy uh, for it may begin to blossom. So I uh, want to encourage you to continue, not just with these town halls, but routinely with that leadership board. I would say too, it has been an incredible six months, now seven months of this model and working with this group of people uh, and it's just, it's been a rich experience for me as well. Thank you all for y'all's time. They've put in a lot of effort, not just to this town hall, but into the past many months of their work. I do want to close out by mentioning this as a part of this next steps that we're taking. Next Sunday on the 4th, um, we're going to have uh, just a brief last model that we'll use it this way. In front, here in the pews, looking at these next few months and immediate things out of the gate that we need help uh, with point people or volunteers to get us over these next few months. But then we're gonna be shifting to a slightly different way of approaching that next steps. On the 25th, um, you've heard a little bit of the process of talking around team building and what we, what we need. <coughs> um, we have a missions team, we have a worship committee. Uh, we have a couple of other functional administrative uh, task teams, but Really, that's even before I arrived, the, the fullness of the council and the different ministry areas, those were our operating groups. Christian education, uh, Jim mentioned before. We really don't have musculature to the body 
around such things. And so one of the things we're going to be working on is a series of once a month lunch meetings right after church, starting with August 25th. And the goal is to both be an open door of involvement for anybody here, not just we're going to recruit to have a committee. If you're here, this is going to follow on that day. And whether you participated before or that Sunday is the first time you can, get involved. Come to lunch. We're going to break out into team groups. Um, I don't know if we had those on the uh, next screen or not. Um, he's back there. Um, but the idea is to engage further with our community, and especially with families and children in our community. We're going to talk about uh, engaging with the campus community, both the students as well as the, the rest of the community of staff and of the faculty. How is it that that can grow? Um, we're going to look at faith development. We want to have a team around that faith formation. We have one prominent Sunday school class. We have a couple of other weekday opportunities and some things that are cyclical on a monthly basis for small groups. What else might we develop? Small group is a foundational relational place for people. How do we do that? Uh, and to Jim's point, looking at beyond this to have consultant possibilities, where is it that we begin to bring our energies together, whatever a consultant may observe, to put something or by or in the water? So looking at that, um, and we also will have a team that's looking, uh, a piece that we've talked about in the leadership board is around funerals. We've had funerals and uh, receptions here. Um, we've had people that have coordinated that, and in the past, recently, Faith Boyle, our office manager, has been the coordinating point person to then work with whoever can be available. We need to get that off of her shoulders. Just speaking as what operating officer, I guess. Um, she's got a lot, and we need help. We need a, a team approach to think about those kinds of things, as well as some of the other care issues that may be a part of it. But these are some of those things on August 25th to come together, and you get to choose. We're going to have a table facilitator who is there to help guide some time of conversation. Uh, but here's our reality. Think this way with me. You know that December 24th is Christmas Eve, right? What's going to happen that day? Who plans it? Who makes it real? We're going to have things like trunk or treat. That date, we can put it on the calendar. But how do we make it real? And if there's going to be anything else on the calendar out beyond Sunday worship, today, I know what's happening in the next hour. How do we think and say it's a blank slate out after a certain point? Just because we've always done it doesn't mean we have a team in place to make it real. These ministry teams are going to be a part of that identifying what's out ahead of us. How do we go month by month in building it out and making it involved? And that's going to go towards some of that involvement and participation as well. So that we don't have those conversations of, you know, today or back to school Sunday is in two weeks. We always used to do this. You know when that conversation needs to take place? Six months ago. This is that opportunity for us to put things into motion so that November, December, there are things that populate our place and our ministry partnership. So I want to encourage you to watch for that. If you're here on the 25th, plan to be in place in those lunch meetings. Um, if you can't make it, know that month by month, there's going to be a table in here over lunch for you and others to come together around these topics. If there are others that develop, communications or otherwise, we will start to populate that. We didn't want to put 15 of them out there. We wanted to start with these key things that we're talking about through our retreat. So thank you very, very much for your time today. Um, Angela, yes? On, on the 25th, too, uh, a little added uh, entertainment, if you want to say, or different uh, to the service, the bluegrass band, So there you go. Should be Should be there you go. Good stuff. So thank you very much. Also, the last thing I'll mention is that we mentioned the leadership board. Bill didn't mention that um, <clears throat> the leadership board takes responsibility. I think I heard he said he was personally covering all of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I he asked me to keep that part. That part. Oh, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to increase the cost of the 
the lot. <laughs> so I do want to say thank you. We have had several folks already who have responded. Uh, we have a personal reflection form. That's a, it's a new way of going about nominations now. Um, we're going to this week be having with the nominations team some personal uh, conversations with some folks who are under consideration and in prayer with us about joining this leadership board in January. And as uh, Debbie or Linda mentioned, there are four positions that are going to be a vacant. And remember this, when we adopted this model, the simplified accountable structure model, the commitment to the leadership board, those folks who are doing this deep, deep tissue work, we said they were on a three-year clock. That means the rest of us need to be ready. They can't rotate back on the next year. They have to take at least a year off. We need folks coming in right behind them. So I just want to lift that up to you. We're in this process, and please keep that process in your prayers. Um, and thank you again for the ways in which you partner. I'm excited. There have been so many things even just in the last few months that have been energizing within the leadership board, within our activities. God, lead us. Lead us. And the goals that have been named, the numbers, are huge. But as somebody once told me, if we're, as a church, not naming things and envisioning things out there that it would take a miracle to accomplish, we haven't set the horizon properly. This will take all of us but not just that. This will require an act of God. Amen? Amen? Let's get to it. Let's pause and pray before we go. Lord God, thank you so, so very much for this day in which we live and breathe and move and have our being. Continue to guide us, O God, as a church of yours that lives in this community. Guide us and may we together be the body of Christ both as we scatter into the world each week, but also in the ways that we are two or three or more gathered in your name, at work, at play, in conversation, in ministry, in worship, all of these things. Oh God, lead us in your kingdom's way. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you one seven, and all. We now have seven minutes to eat all those pastries. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a hot dog eating contest. <laughs> Sugar shot in your worship. Good job. Good job. Rob. Thank y'all. Very, very much.